a tsunami is coming into Bitcoin, according to BlackRock CEO, Larry, aka Lawrence Fink, the big dog. So let's break down what the big dog has to say. When he was uh, making his rounds on mainstream television, this is what he shared. This rally is way beyond the rumor. I think the rally today is about a flight to quality with all the issues around the Israeli war now, global terrorism. And I think there is more people running into a flight, the quality, whether that's in treasuries, gold, or crypto, and depending upon how you think about it. And I believe crypto will play that type of role as a flight to quality. Amen. Larry Fink, preach. Now I want to share with you this bullish price prediction, and then I'm going to be sharing with you some bullish news as well. But they're also claiming that Tether, USDT, and USDC Circle are threats to Bitcoin and their ETF, which is interesting, which leads me to believe, does BlackRock and Mr. Fink have plans of launching their own stablecoin? Well, let's discuss all of it. Let's start with the prediction. The anonymous host of Invest Answers is predicting the approval of a spot ETF will trigger massive inflows from the Wall Street giants. The analyst shares that investing giants, Fidelity, which controls four and a half trillion in assets under management, Charles Schwab, you can see them here on the screen, seven trillion in assets under management. You got Citadel, which is a half a trillion. You got Deutsche Bank, which is just above a trillion. BlackRock, which is considered nine to 10 trillion. You got Nomura, which is 0.7 trillion and Franklin Templeton, which has 1.4 trillion. Collectively, you add these up, we're talking 25 trillion in assets under management. This is a pretty big deal, clearly. Now, according to the analysts, if the seven Wall Street firms allocated just half a percentage of point of their assets under management into the spot Bitcoin ETF in the first year, then after the April 2024 halving, Bitcoin could surge by approximately 3,200% from the current levels and half than in less than half a decade. Quoting him here, if the Wall Street giants allocate a half a percent of the assets under management that many believe they will probably do very easily agreed. It's a given. Now, especially with the connections, the pension funds, et cetera, that need some type of alpha to dip their pension funds out of the hole or else they're just going to go backward and become defunct. This is the assumption that half a percent of asset managers uh, go into the first year uh, from April 2024 all the way up. And if this happens just for the first year, the demand will spike in the price of Bitcoin by April 2028. And again, assuming that a half a percent allocation happens, again, very conservative, right, fam? In the first year, another half a percent in the second year, et cetera, et cetera. That will take us to the price of $920,000 per Bitcoin in the year April of 2028. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analysts. I think this is right in a line with Kathy Wood, who's calling for a million dollar price by 2030. Keep it in mind, the next halving is five months out, 2024. The following halving is 2028, and it's typically preceding the halving when we hit a cycle peak. So I'm guesstimating we hit a $1 million Bitcoin price between the year 2028 in 2030. But what are your thoughts, fam? Let me know. Now, hypothetically, what if they allocated only a half a percent for the first year, but then the following year they put 2%? Or what if they go to 3%, 4 5%? Then it's game on. What if they pull a Ricardo Salinas, the third richest man in Mexico, multi-billionaire, thanks to Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin, he says, is best investment he's ever made. Now, he has over the majority of his portfolio in Bitcoin. What if a major asset manager like BlackRock says, hey, screw the half a percent. We're going hard. Hard. We're going to put 20% in. Game on. You could only imagine. And what if one asset manager does it? It could be a domino effect and others can do the same. Nobody wants to miss out. So when the Wall Street giants start buying Bitcoin, should the spot ETFs get the green light? The analyst says, we know it's a given. We already know BlackRock began seeding their spot Bitcoin ETF back in October, according to Larry Fink. And quoting them here, one of the senior executives from BlackRock said they will get that spot ETF in the next three to six months. I think it's going to be less than 55 days with that deadline now being uh, January 10th. And as I said, it has to be before the halving. BlackRock doesn't want to come in after the halving. They know that's when the fireworks will go off. So send it and let's go. And let me know if you agree or disagree with the crypto analysts. I'm going to share one more bonus story for you regarding BlackRock considering Tether a risk for the Bitcoin ETF and why they may be claiming this. Let's break it down. BlackRock's ETF app was again the talk of the crypto town this week, but this time triggered by Tether FUD, which seems to be a very common occurrence. 
just FYI, if you haven't noticed. Although the filing is from June, industry watchers recently pointed out that the world's biggest fund manager had included warnings about how Tether and the stablecoin market in general could negatively impact Wall Street titans, Bitcoin ambitions. Who cares what their ambitions are, right? Now, crypto critic and synonymous Twitter user Bitfinex pointed out BlackRock is spreading Tether FUD. I agree there. Labeling a section in BlackRock's filing that asserted that the price of Bitcoin can be affected by stablecoins as seeding fear. That's FUD, fam. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. You got to call it for what it is. What could BlackRock's endgame be? Well, here's what Bitfinex shared. Nito. BlackRock is spreading Tether FUD, mentioned unbanked stablecoins, and create artificial demand. Very interesting, right? Now, uh, discloses Tether fraud has been sanctioned or unbacked Tethers, discloses Tether laundering money. So clearly, uh, Tether is an enemy of Larry Fink and BlackRock. And I personally feel anyone who is an enemy of Tether is probably more than likely an enemy of Bitcoin, to some degree here, I know they're launching the ETF, they're bullish as all hell, but the FUD never ends. Why do the true enemies always go after Tether and Bitcoin collectively? It's interesting. But again, in this case, they're embracing Bitcoin and going after Tether. That leads me to believe something very fishy is going on. So first things first, BlackRock, which has over $9 trillion in assets under management, sent shockwaves to the crypto world after it filed for the spot ETF back in June, which sent the Bitcoin price action on a frenzy. The prestigious fund managers app and subsequent comments from the CEO, Larry Fink, has led people to believe that Bitcoin is just a stone's throw away from massive institutional Adoption. Preach. And although the SEC hasn't yet approved a Bitcoin ETF, experts say it's only a matter of time, given a 90% probability we get that green light by January 10th, roughly 55 days out. Now, every ETF app needs to disclose the risks. So what was the Tether FUD? While the trust does not invest in stablecoins, it may nonetheless be exposed to risks that stablecoins pose for the Bitcoin market and other digital asset markets. BlackRock's filing red. Because a large portion of the digital asset market still depends on stablecoins such as Tether and USDC. Now, interestingly, they're an investor, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but Circle is the parent company of USDC. And they're also calling out USDC, which makes it that much more interesting. There is a risk that a disorderly depegging or a run on Tether or USDC can lead to a dramatic market volatility in digital assets more broadly. Now, Tether mints USDT, which is the third largest crypto after Bitcoin and Ethereum, currently with a market cap of $87 billion. And they even have Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Tether is making big moves. And clearly, this is nothing more than FUD. Now, USDT is the most traded digital asset uh, stablecoin, a crypto backed by the stable asset used to enter and exit trades quickly and without using a traditional bank or fiat currency. It's a way to maintain within the crypto ecosystem. How many of you have used Tether USDT? Please let me know. It's especially useful when dollars are restricted or unavailable, particularly in the sphere of DeFi, which seeks to disintermediate the banks. But Tether is controversial. It has been slow to provide documentation. Again, this is FUD in my opinion, but I'm reading you the story. Um, and prove that the US dollar backs it, but we do know that is a fact. The entity is not independently audited, they claim. In 2021, Tether agreed to no longer do business in New York. I believe they opened up shop in El Salvador, and I don't blame them. That's where I would be as well. And they claim the New York Attorney General, they found it had made false statements about its backing of the stablecoin. Again, in my opinion, that's FUD until they can prove it. And BlackRock has to disclose this, concerns around the impact that a stablecoin collapse like Tether can have on Bitcoin in the crypto market, so not to be overblown. And when algorithmic stablecoins like Terra UST imploded last year, I wouldn't be comparing uh, these algorithmic uh, stablecoins to Tether, FYI, because they're different. Uh, Tether is actually backed by more than one-to-one, -one, according to Max Kaiser, just FYI. Bitcoin did take that heavy hit, and the rest of the digital asset market followed. Now, fierce critics of Tether will continue to doom monger. That's right. They have always said that Tether can harm Bitcoin, but we all know it complements one another. Uh, just ask the high priest of Bitcoin yourself, uh, Max Kaiser. But that was just hypothetical, right? The BlackRock needed to mention whatever they could to theoretically happen to the crypto market. Tether didn't answer Decrypt's questions, but Van X strategy advisor, Gaber Gerbach, said on Twitter that there was not much to read into the comments from BlackRock. And I agree. So let's read what Gerber, Gerbach's had to share here. Gaber Gerbach's, my bad. 
he has an interesting name, right? Try saying that three times as fast as you can. Regarding BlackRock's disclosure of the stablecoin's poison risk to Bitcoin, ETF issuers do list all risks that they think of in the disclosure. The US dollar itself and the banking availability are risks, and so are electronic outages and natural disasters. Not much to read into, in my opinion. The regulators also flag potential risks around a number of digital asset market structure matters, including stable coins, many years ago. So there's nothing new here. And as a result, the course, ETF issuers will do their best to disclose any potential risks. This is standard process and prudent practice. So there you have it, my crypto fam. What are your thoughts surrounding Bitcoin as they flight to quality as the ETFs start to get these green lights? Where do you think it's likely to send the King Crypto? Let me know your thoughts in the comments right down below.